What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel into the first real offseason video of the year. The offseason recap is back and better than ever. If you're new around here, these kinds of videos are very simple. Each week where we get any sort of significant news, I'm going to cover everything that has happened up until my recording of this video. In these recaps, I give out information you may or may not already know about, I give my reaction to said moves, and potentially do some speculation alongside it. It's a nice, long-form video where we get to talk and have some fun with the offseason. It'll be mostly official stuff, I might talk about some leaks here and there, but I'll try and stick with the official things. In today's video, we discuss the early stages of free agency, team releases, and contract expirations. You better buckle in, folks, because there is a lot that has happened here on October 1st. The biggest news of the day comes from the Toronto Defiant. At the time of this recording, they dumped every single player except for Hisu. It's understandable that they'd want to make changes since they were kind of just hovering at the average mark last year. But to drop your entire roster is a bit more than I was expecting. Sure, they were just average, but they weren't bad, you know? People like Lastro and Sato were fantastic leaders. Also, people like Michelle and Neist, they were pleasant surprises. It's heartbreaking to see them all go after a fairly productive year. Hopefully, some of these players can kind of just go out there and find a new team heading into Overwatch 2. I have no idea how many of them are going to draw legitimate interest, but at the very least, I suspect that Sato and Lastro will likely find new teams so long as they continue to play this game professionally. Sato makes for a very stable tank option, and Lastro is insanely good. I still feel like some people underrate how disgusting he is. Beyond that, though, I have no idea what is going to happen. I would say all of these players deserve another crack at the league, but as we've come to find out throughout the years, usually only a few of them end up getting picked up. I'm sorry to say this to all my Toronto fans watching, but you're dealing with a crisis yet again. Every single year of this franchise's existence has seen them completely alter their roster. From Season 2 up until now, I believe Toronto have never kept more than two players from a previous roster. In Season 2, heading into Season 3, only Logix and Roki survived, I believe. Then, in Season 3, or I should say at the end of Season 3, it was Logix and Beast who ended up staying. I don't want to sound mean or harsh, but genuinely just speaking the truth, Toronto kind of seem a little dysfunctional from a management and or owner standpoint. They never ever want to stay committed to anything. I get they've never had any ideal results or tournament runs, but sometimes you have to commit if you want to improve. They keep slapping together new rosters hoping that something is eventually going to stick. While I'm not super happy about this, I guess it is kind of understandable to see them make changes heading into Overwatch 2. I think a lot of teams, you're probably going to see them do the same thing. A fresh start really isn't a bad idea, but it's hard for anybody to get behind a franchise that is literally never the same. Where's the stability at? And if the pattern from the last three years tells us anything, Toronto might go full-on Western yet again or something. I just feel so bad for the fans. They're one of the few teams out there who can never stick with what they have. Right now, this leaves the Defiant with just Hisu, and my assumption is they probably found a trade partner for him or something like that. Hisu has absurd potential, so they definitely could get some good money off of him, but who knows? Maybe he stays. If KDG ends up staying with this team, maybe he intends to build the new roster around Hisu. Maybe that's wishful thinking on my part, but some positivity is needed during these trying times. Unfortunately, though, some of that positivity gets further clouded by negativity. I thought I'd bring this into light since so many people may not know about it, but Logix talked about something very interesting on stream recently. To further show how dysfunctional Toronto were, they made Logix feel very isolated during Season 4. In a clip posted to Reddit, he talks about how the team had a separate Discord for all of the Korean players only. Apparently, they talked in that server a lot of the time, rather than the one that included Logix. What makes the situation seems really bad to me, though, is that Logix had no idea for a couple of months into the season. They just straight up did not tell him, and that seems really wrong to me. Why make a separate Discord without one of your players? He was part of the team too, you know? You can include him, but then tell him you just want to speak in Korean most of the time. I'm sure he wouldn't have minded as much if you did that. But to make something like this behind his back? Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of that. This information is not super relevant at this point, given the team is going to change a lot, but I thought it might be worth sharing anyway. A link to the clip can be found in the description if you want to check it out. In other Toronto news, they officially parted ways with assistant coach Hachi Lee. 
further indicating that this team is ready to make drastic change. The Defiant were not extremely flexible last year, nor did they always have the best game plans, so I think a move like this is rather justified. A big part of success does start with the coaching, and it's something that you have to start working on immediately if there's problems. And that covers the Toronto portion of this video. The next team to make significant changes at this moment in time is the Paris Eternal. They announced the departure of Suna, Onigod, Vestola, and head coach get amazed. Suna leaving the team doesn't really surprise me. I went over it yesterday because, you know, he's not really a super flexible option. Not a terrible player by any stretch, but mostly only effective on Tracer, which does you no good. Vestola leaving isn't crazy hard to believe either, because while he certainly did a fantastic job under short notice, he was mostly just a stand-in player, I feel like. He was an emergency pickup who likely wasn't going to last. He was a mercenary, and he did his job. I'm sure Paris have their sights set on somebody else they foresee being a potential long-term option. Plus, Tank is kind of in a weird spot anyway, considering you only have one in the game at a time now. What's a bit more surprising in my opinion, though, is Onigod and Get Amazed. Both of them felt like pivotal aspects of the Paris roster in 2021. Onigod brought forth some great consistency on the DPS role. He played well, and I would say that Khan and Naga were the only real players on the team who trumped him consistency-wise. I guess that Paris are looking towards some sort of, like, upgrade that's more explosive at this position. Who it could be? I have no idea. Europe has great talent out there just waiting to be discovered. Or who knows? Maybe the Eternal are going to be more willing to sign players from other regions. Perhaps they'll become mixed like we saw in Season 3. Definitely a storyline to monitor very closely as free agency keeps moving forward. As for Get Amazed, I'm pretty shocked about this one. He was oftentimes found in the conversation for Coach of the Year during 2021. He deserves a ton of credit for what this Paris team accomplished. He seems like a keeper to me. I'm praying that he finds another job at this level because he is more than worth the price. He's a great guy who knows how to get a lot out of his players. Maybe the London Spitfire could pick him up or something. Sadly though, the future is uncertain. He may never get another shot again at this level, or maybe he retires. For Paris, I'm kind of hoping this is hinting at a potential J-Mac promotion. Everything I hear about this guy is great, all the time. Maybe it's time to make him the new head coach. The possibilities are endless. On to the Philly Fusion. Free agency is looking to be very interesting for this particular franchise. So far, Funny Astro and Poco are exploring free agency, while Mono is taking a break from Overwatch to likely pursue mandatory military service. That's a lot to digest, I get it, so let's break it down. Poco seems to be full-on looking for a new team, according to his post. Given that he never played last year and he's been with this team for so long, a change of scenery definitely makes sense. The question is, though, will anybody give him a chance? I would say the answer is probably. He's a good veteran to have on any roster, and while it's been a while since he's played, I think he still could be a pretty good player. I suspect that Poco could find a new job this year at the OWL level. Maybe he signs with, like, the Paris Eternal, let's say. With Vestola gone, they could use another tank player. He also ensures that Paris continue to have French representation on their roster. Poco finding a new team might be tough, but it would not be surprising at all if he finds a new team. The more interesting case, though, is probably Funny Astro for most of you out there. He did not rule out the possibility of returning to Philly. He intends to explore his options, much like how Moth did one year prior. Given his synergy with Alarm and the relationship he has with the Fusion Org, him returning is certainly a possibility. But some other destinations might sound intriguing for him as well. Depending on where he goes, he might have a real chance to win a championship instead of going through this constant pain of being a Fusion player. I could totally see Astro going to, like, the Atlanta Reign, let's say, if Masa ends up getting released. Astro already has found success with the Atlanta Academy team in the past, and he knows some of these players on the current team quite well. The Reign are coming off a grand finals appearance as well, so this makes for an appealing option, I feel. Maybe Astro decides to go with, like, the Paris Eternal or London Spitfire if he wants to connect with those European routes. I could even see him maybe going to the Outlaws, as he would definitely be a huge upgrade for them. No matter what his decision is, though, Funny Astro's a main Day. He's coming back to this league no matter where he ends up going. Thinking about Mono real quick, this is a sad time to be a long-term fan of the league. Mono has been here since day one. Some might even recognize him back from the 2017 World Cup days. Regardless of how long you've been watching him for, I think I speak for most of us when I say we are grateful for Mono's commitment to this game. He was part of some fantastic NYXL teams back in the day. 
and he was undoubtedly one of the most consistent main tanks in league history. He took a bit of a step back in Season 4, but was also on a brand new team. When you look at his Overwatch 1 career from start to finish though, he was pretty much always a top tier player at his position. Mono is fantastic, he's a leader, a positive figure in this community, and one of the best Winston players I have ever seen. If this marks the end of Mono's career, then we can look back at it pretty fondly. Thank you for everything, Mono. It was a blast to see you in this league for so many years, and if this is the last we see of you, I wish you nothing but the best of luck in your future. In terms of what this means for the fusion, well, time to get a new tank. Mono was kind of starting to decline a little bit anyway, so it's not a terrible loss. It's time to get a new and fresh face in there. The fusion usually don't go for a ton of rookies, so I'm assuming they'll probably pursue a free agent of some sort. As more people announce the expiration of their contracts in the coming days, it will become clear what their options are. As for now though, Philly fans are going to have to patiently wait and watch. Good luck my friends, good luck. In other Fusion news, assistant coach Moby Dick is officially out. After nearly two years of being under contract, the Fusion are finally ready to move on. While it is very clear that Philly liked him, they really had no choice but to make adjustments. Their inconsistencies from last year were simply unacceptable. Maybe a coaching change is a way to fix that. Should be interesting to see if they grab anybody noteworthy to replace him. How about some Houston Outlaws info now? We start with Jangu, who announced his contract has expired. It's unclear if the Outlaws have any interest in re-signing him. With Jangu currently open to offers and Houston not making any sort of official goodbye tweet, I would say there definitely is a possibility he returns. I would start preparing for the worst as an Outlaws fan though. As great as he was early on, Jangu is not absurdly versatile. As we head into a game where flexibility is a must, this might turn off Houston. I could totally see them committing to Dreamer instead moving forward, or perhaps they have their eyes on an up-and-coming free agent. The Outlaws are going to be looking for somebody who can play every main tank hero. They've got Piggy for Zarya, Diva, and Sigma. Now you need to find somebody to complete the other half of the puzzle. Maybe they convince like Sato or somebody to join. That could be a pretty decent match. I'm excited to see how the Outlaws handle this. I'm also excited to see if Jangu finds a new landing spot. I know I just complained about some flexibility issues, but the talent is there. If somebody's willing to give him a chance and work with him, he might do some great things. Jangu simply has to practice harder. It's all on him. If he wants it enough, this will not be the last we see of him. Adding on to the outlaw free agent list is Crimzo. Crimzo will also be exploring his options for the upcoming 2022 season. Keep in mind that he very well could return to the outlaws. He did not rule out that possibility in his tweet, and I'm sure all Houston fans out there are praying that he comes back, because he played well last year. He's somebody you definitely want to hold on to, and honestly, I think Houston will be one of his top choices. He found some of the most success he's ever had in his career through this franchise, not to mention that he's built up good relationships with the likes of Dante and Piggy, among others. If I had to take a guess, Houston is probably going to be his number one destination, but on the off chance he does want to change teams, some other teams I could see him maybe signing with, depending on how things go, are Vancouver, Toronto, or London. I do not believe Crimzo has a ton of options, especially if he wants to remain a starter, so Houston really might be his best bet. The other half of the Houston support line from last year could be on his way out as well though, as Juby announced that he too will be a free agent. I for one think it's probably a bit more important to pursue Crimzo over Juby. No offense to Juby, but I just think that he wasn't all that flexible. There were a lot of times where Jake was coming in to play Brigitte and Mercy and whatnot. Juby was mostly more of a Lucio player, and again, I think you need a lot more flexibility heading into Overwatch 2. I think that's something that a lot of teams are going to be valuing, so I would not be surprised if Juby does does not get re-signed. Looking back at it though, it was a good value pickup for the Outlaws, as I'm sure most people weren't all that interested in Juby at the time, but he really performed well during tryouts, and they kind of got him, I'm assuming, for a cheaper price than the average main support, and on top of that, he was like a diamond in the rough type of player, at least on Lucio. Juby served his purpose for what it's worth, and now it's time to move on from him, at least I think. It might be a good idea to pursue somebody like Funny Astro. I talked about it earlier, but I really do think it could be a decent 
decent fit, and he's more versatile than somebody like Juby. It's a match made in heaven. Overall, I don't think the Outlaws or their fans should be panicking that much, as I do think that Juby could be easily replaced, at least from the versatility side of things. Something else that happened with Houston player-wise that kind of went down a few weeks ago, but I thought I'd bring up anyway, is that KSF retired from Pro Overwatch. This move doesn't really affect the Outlaws or anything per se, but it's still a noteworthy retirement. Some people may not be aware, but KSF has been in the league since late Season 1. This is a longtime veteran of the game moving on to his next adventure. KSF definitely deserves some praise for sticking around for so long and providing us with years worth of entertainment. As a former Valiant fan who has watched him grow, I for one am going to miss him. He's a chill guy who worked very hard to improve. He played a huge role on that Season 2 Valiant team, and I shall forever remain grateful for something like that. If KSF goes pro in another game, he's gonna kill it. Good luck, Mr. Kyle. You're gonna do great. One other bit of Houston Outlaws news stems from Harsha. After four years of being an analyst and coach, Harsha has decided to hang it up. In his tweet, he explained that he has lost the passion to keep on going. He felt it fleeting throughout the year and recognizes that it's not in the best interest of his team to have an unmotivated leader. Maybe this could end up being a good thing for the Outlaws. Unless Junkbuck leaves, he is now the one and only leader slash head coach, if you will. Maybe the Outlaws can push themselves to the next level now that it's strictly about his own philosophies only. I don't mind this decision. I think a singular head coach is the way to go. Thinking about Harsha's career, I think he can walk away feeling proud. He was part of some great teams throughout the years. The 2019 Titans are the biggest accomplishment, of course, but I think this year's Outlaws team was also respectable. He didn't have the greatest career we've ever seen or anything like that, but it was admirable at the very least. GG to Harsha, and good luck with whatever comes next. Up next, we've got a fair amount of news on the Dallas Fuel. The thing that most people already know about is that Exe is leaving the team. It really is a shame that he never played a single match in a Dallas uniform, but with context, this move kind of makes sense. According to the rumors, Exe would prefer to play for an APAC team, and that's totally understandable. He might be going into a brand new system, but at least he gets a serious chance to play closer to home. It's unfortunate for the Fuel, but they'll live. If the Fuel keep most of what they have, this won't be the biggest loss in the world. One can't help but wonder, though, how awesome it would have been to watch Exe on this Dallas team. I guess it wasn't meant to be. Now comes the question of where Exe goes from here. He did make it clear on social media that he is ready to return after taking time to recover. If he wants to play for an APAC team, that opens up a lot of different options. Maybe the Dynasty pick him up if they decide to part ways with Fitz. Exe, in my opinion, has the greater ceiling, so that's an insta upgrade. Somewhere else that he could go is maybe Guangzhou. They're in desperate need of a hit scan, and Exe fits the bill. Those are the destinations that immediately jump out to me, but there's probably some other ones I'm forgetting about, so let me know down in the comments where you think Exe could go. In the meantime, we can all welcome Exe's return with open arms. He basically confirmed that he's attempting to shake off the rust in NA contenders. His team of choice is supposedly Team Solaris. He'll be playing on high ping, so don't expect anything ridiculous. But if you want to see this king back in action after over a year, definitely tune into Overwatch Contenders. Support Tier 2. Unfortunately for Dallas fans, though, Exe is not the only person moving on. Jexay's departure has also been announced. This one definitely tugs at the heartstrings because Jexay is a wonderful human being, but I'd be lying to you if I said that I didn't see this move coming. As mentioned in yesterday's video, he was arguably the weakest starter on the roster. He just wasn't that productive statistically, and that's kind of alarming when considering the team he's playing for. In my opinion, his play outside of Lucio left a lot to be desired. No offense to Jexe, but I think that the Fuel can do better. In my opinion, upgrading the main support position is a pivotal step that Dallas needs to take in order to further improve upon their competitive edge. Saying goodbye is never an easy thing, but I think as time goes on, most of the Dallas fans out there will probably recognize that it's for the best. As of this video, Jexe has not publicly announced what he's going to do next. On the topic of Dallas departures, I've got a few more for you thanks to a reliable Dallas Fuel writer, Sean Collins. Sean revealed that Pine's contract has expired and that it's not getting renewed and that Rappel will be retiring. Get ready for the major fan outrage and the people saying they wasted a contract on Pine. It's coming. I guarantee you. I get it. It's disappointing to see Pine rejoin the league just to never play. 
but you have to remember that Pine couldn't join the team for a very long time due to the ongoing pandemic. By the time he made it to Dallas facilities, it was a bit too late to try and incorporate him in a non-risky manner. If Pine had been there for longer, let's say, he surely would have gotten some playtime. So please, before you start complaining if you're one of those people, just realize it was a tough situation for the field to control. That said, it kind of sucks that Pine won't be sticking around. Watching him and Sparkle together, that would have been a treat. That's one of the flashiest DPS lines to ever exist. That's two elite hitscan players now in the same year that Dallas never got to use. What a shame. As for what Pine can do next, I'm not sure. Given that Dallas gave him a chance and he clearly wants to grind again, another team might end up giving him a shot. You never know what could happen over the next couple of months. A team might really need a sniper specialist of some sort. Fingers crossed that this is not the end of Pine's legacy. That triumphant return after missing the last three years would be so incredibly epic. Discussing Rappel real quick before moving on, I doubt that Dallas had much interest in keeping him anyway, even if he did not retire. Fielder is just immensely more valuable, and they could probably find a better backup on the market anyway. I kind of feel bad for Rappel in a way. In two out of three seasons, he was forced to be a bench player, playing behind elite flex support talents. But at the same time, he had his fair share of opportunities opportunities to prove himself. Dallas tried to incorporate him early on during season 4, but he just wasn't that impactful. Plus, for a while he was the starter on Houston, so the chances were definitely there. He just didn't have it in him to capitalize. GG's to Repel though. He stuck around for a lot longer than I ever thought he would have. Good luck with whatever comes next. I'm sure that he's going to do just fine. Next on the agenda is some San Francisco shock news. Sorry, Shock fans, but it looks like some more pieces are on their way out, potentially. Twilight announced he is exploring other options in free agency. Given that Violet is the top option on paper if he stays, this makes sense. The Shock got good use out of him, but he was by no means their most valuable support player. Plus, a player of Twilight's caliber coming off the bench for over a year is unreal. It still surprises me. I'm happy this guy has the chance to be a full-time starter again. He's been a top flex support of the game since joining the league. He deserves this opportunity more than most, I would argue. And what's great is, a lot of teams will likely be interested in his services. I mean, holy moly. Think of all the teams out there who could instantly upgrade their support line by signing Twilight. Some great destinations for Twilight include, but are not limited to, The Spark, Charge, Dynasty, Justice, Defiant if they don't go full Western, the NYXL if the Jonic rumors are true, and others potentially. I for one would love to see him sign with the Washington Justice. An aggressive option with the massive playmaking potential he possesses could help the Justice so much if they choose to remain with their current core. Let me know where you think Twilight should sign in the comments below, because to me, there are very few wrong answers out there. The final thing on today's bucket list is the Florida Mayhem. In the calm before a potential storm, the Mayhem parted ways with assistant coaches Dox and Insight, both of whom have been here since 2019. Those guys earned their worth, no doubt about it. However, changes kind of became justified after a letdown season like this one. With these two sticking with the Mayhem for as long as they did, I feel that other teams may be inclined to give them a shot if they decide not to retire. I wish I could say this was it for the Mayhem, but there's a good chance apparently from all the social media stuff going on that they're only getting started. Sorry to say it, Mayhem fans, but this could be the beginning of the end. After a couple of years of being somewhat relevant, you're kind of in a weird situation again, and if anything happens, I will be here to break the news. If a lot of crazy stuff happens at once, Florida might even get their own dedicated video. Stay tuned, folks, because things are about to get crazy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up today's episode. So much has happened in a matter of days, hours even when you think about it. I kind of figured we were in for some crazy announcements, but the short amount of time it has took has just absolutely blown me away. Let me know what you think of all of these things down in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video and want more off-season recaps like this one, giving this video a like and subscribing would help a lot. And as always, thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate your support, and until next time, this is ATP, signing out. Peace.